Fuel moisture is one of the most important concepts to understand when it comes to wildfire. And the best way to understand it, I've always thought, is to actually just think of two different campfires because it makes it very intuitive. So on this campfire on the left, we're going to say these are some logs that were sitting outside overnight. It was a cold night. Their fuel moisture is around 150%. So they're very damp logs. Now on the right over here, these are logs that have been sitting inside for the past four months and they've just been drying out over and over again every single night. And their fuel moisture, we'll just say, is about 40%. So understandably, if we go to start this campfire with the logs on the left that have the high fuel moisture, we're going to be lucky to even get that fire started. And if we do get it started, it's going to burn very slowly, not very hot, and it's most likely just going to go out. So this is what your fuels would be like, let's say in winter after it's been raining. We've been getting some great rain in California at the time that I'm filming this video. So a lot of that moisture has been going back into our fuels and it has drastically reduced fire danger at a point in the year when we actually still can get some pretty large fires. All right, so now we'll look at these logs on the right. These are dry logs. And it would be especially easy to start this fire as well if these were kind of smaller pieces of fuel because those would have a bigger surface area so they dry out even faster. But we're not, we'll maybe dive into that in another video. Let's just stick with the fuel moisture. These are very dry logs. And intuitively that fire is going to be a lot easier to start and that fire is going to burn a lot hotter and faster once it does start. So these conditions are more like towards the end of summer when it hasn't rained in a very long time, all the fuels are very dried out. So any little spark that happens can just take off into a massive blaze. And this also can happen when there's a large amount of fuel accumulation in an area, because then if you think about it, if you have a hundred trees sharing the same amount of water as what should be sustaining 10 trees, each one of those trees is going to have a lot less water and they're going to be a lot drier. So in other words, dry logs burn a lot hotter and faster and they it's easier to start the fire than say moist logs. Probably nothing too surprising there. Now where something might be surprising is when it comes to how we actually calculate fuel moisture. And this is something that I've done at the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Laboratory where we'll actually go up into the Santa Cruz mountains, collect fuel samples, and then figure out the fuel moisture. And this is the process for figuring out the fuel moisture. So, oh, don't want that pen right there. I'm gonna go back to this one. So in step one, you are going to go and look for a plant called chemise. The reason a lot of fuel moisture sampling is done with chemise is because it's a plant that's common throughout almost all of California. So that means scientists who are doing fuel moisture samples up in Northern California can collect samples, figure out the fuel moisture, and then scientists in Southern California can do the exact same thing. And then you can compare the two values. Because if we were comparing, let's say chemise, which is a chaparral plant against, I don't know, like an oak tree, the fuel moistures are going to be very different because the fuels are different. So how you, how you do this, you actually just go up there and you look for the chemise plant. You have some kind of, I'm just going to draw some scissors here because I don't think my drawing skills are good enough to draw pliers. Uh, we're going to make that a little better. There we go. Those are the scissors right there. And you're just going to clip those plants into a paint can. So in step two, what you're going to do is you're going to take your paint can and you are going to put it on a scale. And remember at this point in time, the fuels in this plant can are what you would call wet fuels. And you're gonna weigh it, we're just going to say for the sake of argument, it's 150. I'm just gonna kind of make up numbers throughout this video. All right, then in step three, you're going to take that paint can and you are going to put it in an oven. So here's your little paint can in your oven. So you're gonna dry it out for 24 hours and then you're going to come back over here 
we're gonna draw our scale again and you're going to weigh those fuels again now the key point is your fuels are actually different at this point all the water has been evaporated out of those fuels so when we draw these little twig samples in there again now they're very dry fuels then all you're going to do is use this fairly simple equation you're going to take the weight of the wet fuels minus the weight of the dry fuels over the weight of the dry fuels times 100 and that equals your fuel moisture percentage now one key thing i will say is when you're talking about the weights of the wet and dry you have to remember this is something that i've actually done wrong in the past and it came back to bite me when i turned the results into my advisor you have to remember to subtract the weight of the paint can because that shouldn't be part of your calculation when it comes to those fuel moistures but overall that's it the basic summary of this video is that not a big surprise dry fuels burn a lot hotter and faster than wet fuels and if you want to figure out what a fuel moisture is you just get some samples you weigh them you dry them out you weigh them again and then you use this simple formula so hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching